Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina, everybody. Today, I am joined by Matt, who is a producer amongst a ton of other titles. So how are you doing? I am great. I'm great. It's good to be here. How did how did you figure out that this was what you wanted to do? Uh, you know, music was always what I wanted to do, even when I didn't know that I loved music. I actually grew up as a... Um, from when I, before, when I was in kindergarten, I wanted to be an artist, uh, draw, I love illustrations um, for all my anime hits out there. Um, I love illustrations. So um, from there until actually high school, my junior year in high school, um, I actually had an art class uh, and the art class didn't, ha- I, that like my last semester of art that I took in high school, was a class that they made up for me because I, they didn't have any more classes. I just took the highest art class I could take. And so the next level was college, but I wasn't old enough to be in college yet to take college courses. And so they um, they were like, after that last class, it was like, look, you know, I'm with my guidance counselor and she's like, you don't have any more, you know, we got to take something else for an elective. And so the, the question was literally, the option was um, choir or basket week. And so, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I was like, ah, I'll take choir. Oh, uh, and so um, from there, I just found out and realized that, man, I'd always been singing. I always loved music. That was always, I would go home. If I wasn't drawing, I was listening to music, listening to the radio, you know. Um, and so that really, really became an eye opener for me. And then from there, it just, it just evolved and evolved and evolved into where I became a producer. Um, I had a singing group and it was a, a acapella group, you know, and and we were singing around and we couldn't find um, studios that would actually be able to record us because uh, it, it was about four or five of us singing a, a, um, acapella harmony and they just didn't know how to, re- the engineers just didn't know how to record us. Um, and so we started, like we just, me and the group and the, the management team around us um, just started. Like, somebody had an, uh, uh, a, a, a mixing console. Somebody had somebody else had a microphone. And somebody else had this. Somebody else that. And we're like, let's put it all together until we can find the studio. Uh, I was like, I remember a conversation we had. We were having with uh, with uh, I was having with the management company. I'm the mouth of the, of the group, and so I'm like, you know, I'm tired of like paying for. Now, mind you, I wasn't paying for anything, but we're tired of. Pay- <laughs> I was doing nothing but just singing, and right? And so I'm like, you know, I'm tired of, of paying for, um, paying for studios and paying for recordings, and you know, nobody knows. Nobody knows what they're doing. Like we can we can do bad recordings on our own <laughs> you know what I mean for free like yeah. that's easy that's it and, and literally when I said it everybody was like quiet for what seemed like an hour but it's probably like five seconds and they're like you know what well let's just put some stuff together until we can find one that you know that'll work that'll work for you Matt and I was like yeah let's do that and so from there I just kind of fell into you know telling people what's like I want to hear this I want to hear that and then finally the guy who uh who actually taught me how to engineer he was like you know what I'm tired of you telling me what to do you do it and, and literally that was my training and so I just fell into engineering just like that there you go I love stories like that though. obviously you were a very creative person had you know so many different hands and thoughts but that's so cool I've traveled over hills Swam the widest seas To find someone like you To love me, to love me There's nothing I can do You're always on my mind If there's only three words I can tell you I tell you a thousand times A thousand times that I dream
We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. Welcome back to Living Local Carolina. We got a hot topic today. Hot and cold, how to keep dogs nice and cool yes. or warm and toasty. That's right. Joyelle, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Katie. Thank you for stopping by today. Yes. Give me some tips. Sure. So right now, as you know, we are in a heat wave. So it's very, very hot for our dogs. Mm -hmm. So primarily, you need to pay attention to how hot the ground is. When the temperature is around 80 degrees, your asphalt is about 115. Not fun. Not fun at all. So what that actually can do is to burn blisters on the bottoms of your dog's feet. So it's very, very important top of the line, you need to make sure it's not too hot. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I see people walking their dogs in the heat of the day all the time. And I continue to say, it is too hot outside, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so it's really, really important because mm -hmm. those blisters, it, it just creates very much blisters on the bottoms of their feet and it can really damage their feet. So really mm -hmm. be mindful of that. Walk in the earlier morning times or in the later evening times, gotcha. okay? Also provide enough water. So if you have outside dogs, which I don't recommend having dogs in the heat of the day outside but if it's not possible make sure you provide them enough shade and you bring them in uh, when mm -hmm. you're able provide enough water for them now going to cold so it's really important again to take care of your dog's feet lots of times people throw out the ice melt or the salt to help uh -huh. prevent any slipping and sliding that also can um, damage your paws feet as well because it gets into their paws and then they'll Ooh. lick it and it contains all those chemicals that are dangerous for dogs. Ooh, so it's really nice. important that you wipe their feet off, clean them off, again providing enough water and enough food for them. If it's super cold outside, bring them inside or in a warm area. If they happen to be outside, provide a home for them that's a little bit raised up off the ground, put some shavings or something like that in there so they're not laying directly on the ground. It's very, very important. Gotcha. Yes. Shedding. And do you have any tips? Because I've heard that it's not good to shave dogs. Sure. Because it messes up their coats. Is that true? Oh, so I would definitely say talk to your groomer about that, mm -hmm. but there are tools that you can use. There's like a de-shedder. It's really important because you need to at least brush your dog to get all of the excess hair off mm -hmm. of them, especially during the winter months. They're going to blow their coat anyway. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Living Local Carolina. Today, I am joined in the studio by Lauren from Cliggs Kites. How are oh, you doing? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Good. Obviously, good. people in this area, we love kites, and mm -hmm. you guys are huge when it comes to purchasing kites, but you actually have an event coming up. Yes, we do. It's um, March uh, 23rd and 24th as of right now, um, and it's in, all the way in Huntington State Park. Mm -hmm. State Park. We're really excited about it. And you said this was the third annual? Third annual, yeah. All right, talk to me about years past. What can people expect? People expect all sorts of things, big kites, little kites. Um, we have people who fly and steer the kites. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's just a lot of fun. It's just pretty, pretty beach because it's right in like pristine park area, yeah. state park area. So people love to just see it all and just take all the nature in. It's just a good time for big folks, little folks, so. I was assuming it's kind of an all ages sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. So can you go and just enjoy the kites without having a kite of your own, or do you recommend getting a kite beforehand? Um, you can do either one. I mean, I have people who just want to sit and who literally just come in, just sit and fly the kite, or just sit there and come in just to watch the kites fly. Because it's like, you know, you go to a museum. Some people bring their art. Some people don't bring their it's art. Very true. Yeah. So um, I, yeah, well, we will have kites to fly, uh, to buy. So um, there. So that's good to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit more about Cliggs Kites. Um, Cliggs Kites has been around for 43 years, and um, wow. we um, just were a really good local staple for the whole family, just to buy toys, fun stuff, just for everything on the beach, and um, it's a good family business for everyone to have fun. Really. I love that. Yeah. Now, what are some, po I don't know if you can give me specific here, but what are some popular kites that people are buying these days? Yeah, people, a lot of people like to buy the trick kites, which yeah. is like yeah. kites that you can make go certain ways and do yeah. flips and all turns and tube stuff. Um, and um, people love to buy some character kites just for the kids. Mm. I have one that's really popular. It's usually Spider-Man. Of um, course. Yeah, so, but um, I mean, it's just, people just love to just 
buy the traditional kite, just a triangle shaped kite, and they're done. Love they're, it. Yeah, that's it. We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. Well, thanks for joining us today on Living Local Carolina. I'm so excited to be rejoined by Quadre Stuckey. How are you doing? I'm blessed. I'm glad to be here. Nice to see you again. Thank oh, you. Of course. Of course. We've got a lot to talk about. He's obviously brought some stuff to show us today. Um, but give me an update on what you've been doing for the last couple of months. Well, I mean, uh, life's been amazing. I've been doing my shows. I published a new book. I have new artwork. Um, I also got engaged recently, too. So Very that's new. Exciting. That's exciting. And, um, you know, I'm just getting ready for what 2024 has to bring an offer. So I'm excited for that, too. And one thing I know about you is you do a ton of research. Yes. So that took a lot to go into this book, huh? Yes, it is. Uh, so this is my new book right here, Gullah Paintings 3. So inside the actual book, it's our educational book for children. Um, in the book, I actually talk about the history of Gullah. I also talk about, you know, the seafood culture, where we do a lot of shrimping, a lot of red rice, a lot of okra. I talk about a lot of the superstitions, like the bottle trees, the mm -hmm. hag, the haint blues. And I talk about the artwork, because a lot of people love my artwork. So I talk about the artwork and then the spirituality and the connections we have to Barbados and our architecture. So this is a very good book to add to your uh, collection if you don't have a book collection. This is a good piece to start with a book collection. Mm -hmm. So for people who may not know who you are, yes. the very few people out there, yes. talk to me about your art, how you got into art, and where you draw inspiration from. So uh, my art is based upon my culture, Gullah Geechee culture. And what Gullah Geechee culture is, is pretty much the enslaved Africans that were brought over from different parts of West Africa, the Ivory Coast and Gold Coast. They were isolated on sea islands, like due to Carolinas and, you know, like Myrtle Beach, where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And pretty much it's just us staying closest to our West African heritage. So that's why I draw a lot of my inspiration from when it comes to, like, my paintings. I like to use a lot of bright, bold, tropical colors because when you look at the work, I want you to feel excited. I want you to feel happy. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel good about yourself. And, you know, uh, I do a lot of paintings on women because women played a big role in my life. Like, you know, my mother, my grandmother, and my aunts. So okay. that's, like, where a lot of my inspiration comes from. Also just that everyday low country uh, lifestyle, like mm -hmm. being by the beach, fishing, shrimping, you know, just enjoying the scenery with a loved one. So mm. that's where it comes from. Okay. So when you were doing and ins finding inspiration for your book, doing the research, was there anything that you've learned along the way that kind of shocked you or surprised you a bit? Yeah, so uh, there were certain things that I didn't know about certain superstitions. So for example, like we have something called like the boo hag that rides you at night when you're asleep and you can't move. So um, Really, scientifically, it's called when you sit there and you can't move, sleep but paralysis? you're awake. Yeah, sleep paralysis. It's happened to me before. <laughs> but our name for it is Buhag. So that's oh. just kind of like the translation when it comes to our culture to scientifically, they're calling it sleep paralysis. So that was mm. something, you know, that kind of stuck out to me, showing how close those things kind of, you know, yeah. combine and come together. I've been visited by that before. Ooh, it's man. it's pretty scary. It is. You're up, you can't move. You're it's like, like you're in a, a scary movie, a horror flick. Yeah. Yes. Okay, tell me about the bottle trees. I don't know yes. the superstition behind that. So what you put blue bottle trees in your yard. The reason why is it uh, sucks in the evil spirit. So let's mm -hmm. say like if a hag tries to come and get you instead of getting into the house, you know, to put you in that paralysis, it'll actually go into the blue bottle tree and then it gets locked in there. And then when the sunlight comes out in the daytime, it'll actually burn up in the sun. And oh. then sometimes, like, people say they hear a superstition of, like, it whistling outside. Mm -hmm. That's really like the wind hitting the bottle at a certain angle. Mm -hmm. And it's sounding like the boo hag was captured inside of it. Spooky. Mm, yes. Interesting. All right, we have to talk about sweet grass baskets, yes, of course. Definitely. Huge, huge, huge. Yes. All across the low country and here in the Grand Strand. Always, yes. So I had to bring in one of... Sweetgrass baskets, yes. Beautiful. So what the sweetgrass basket actually consists of, is consists of sweetgrass, bulrush, uh, pine needle, and then it's an old West African uh, we, uh, sewing tradition that we still carry today. And if you can notice, each sweetgrass has its own specific pattern and design on mm -hmm. it. And then it was used traditionally to transport rice, fruits, mm -hmm. vegetables, and sometimes sewn tight enough it could transport in whole water. Because they're very strong.
Don't forget to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. How to use the QR code. Just open the camera app on your smartphone, iPad, or tablet. Point your device at the QR code so the QR code appears on your screen. Your device will recognize the QR code and show you a notification. Click that notification and you'll come to our website. Living Local Carolina, weekday mornings at 9.30 on WBTW News 13.